Hello and welcome to Lessons from a Park Bench. I'm Michael Clark. I'm one of your co-hosts for this show. I want to thank you for tuning in to Don't Drop the Ball in Your Friendships. You know, picking your friends is a very tough, difficult decision because whoever you pick to be your friend and ultimately whoever becomes your best friend is a very big decision for somebody and you think it's, it's so little. I mean, I had so many friends in kindergarten, had so many friends in, you know, first, second, third, fourth grade. You get to middle school, you get to high school, college, out in the real world, picking friends is very vital. Now, in middle school, you just kind of start to get the feel of the cool crowd, the crowd that everybody wants to hang around with, the crowd that everybody wants to be with. Nobody wants to not be in with the cool crowd. High school, that really takes hold. The people who were in the cool crowd a couple of years ago that are not anymore, and then other people that weren't considered in the cool crowd are now in the cool crowd, it gets confusing. When you pick your friends, though, a lot of times you'll want to do what they do. And that's that's obvious. You'll want to be like them. You'll want to do the same stuff as them. And I'm not trying to say that that's wrong. Whatever you want to do with your friend, as long as it's fine with the Lord, as long as it's okay to do, and it's not sinful, that's fine. Have fun. I go to the movies with my friends sometimes. I go to the movies with my fellow co-host Jake and with Blake. Every now and then we get together and we hang out and we have a lot of fun. When we put these videos together, we have a lot of fun. Now, I want to talk about some biblical examples of friends. When, when Daniel, and I want to talk about Daniel's friends in two instances. Daniel's friends that make the right decision, and Daniel's friends that try to make a wrong decision. Now, in Daniel chapter 3, we have Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they are told, Do not bow to anybody to anything, excuse me, but this idol that we made. Now, when the music plays, when the trumpets sound, when all this happens, bow. Bow to this statue. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, no, they're not supposed to do that. And so they don't. What was the punishment for this? Well, the punishment is thrown into a fiery furnace. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are thrown into the fiery furnace. Nothing happens. Not even a singe on their head happens. You know why? Because they obeyed what God said, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That was a direct commandment from God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego obeyed that commandment. They were saved for it. They make the right choice. You want to talk about Daniel, who had some friends that were governors and satraps that found out Daniel might be getting a great amount of power over this kingdom. That's not fair. He's a captive from... You know, he's a captive. We've, we've brought him over to us. Why should he get some of this kingdom power? Why should he get that power? That's our power. We're, we were born in this nation. We should get this power. <coughs> Excuse me. They devise a plan to try to find a way to make it to where Daniel can't get this power. And they said, we won't find anything with Daniel except it be with his God. So they go to the king and they ask him to sign a decree saying nobody can pray to anybody but you, O king. And now what that means is anybody prays to God or any other person, any other being, they will be thrown into the lion's den. Well, what did they know? They knew that Daniel would go home and he would try to do what God said. That's what Daniel was like. They knew that. They, they said we're not going to find anything wrong with him unless it's with his God. And Daniel went home, verse 10, knowing the decree had been signed, opened his windows toward Jerusalem, and knelt down and prayed three times a day, as was his custom. Now, I really think that what happened to the governors and satraps is something we all need to take an account for for when we do something wrong. They were eaten by the lions, the very lions. They tried to get Daniel eaten by. They were eaten by. Have you ever heard of somebody trying to backstab a friend, and what they do is they get it in their head that they will be able to backstab this friend, and then what happens that they plan to happen to this person ends up happening to them. I've seen it happen. It's happened to me. It's not fun. That's kind of what the situation was in Daniel and the lion's den. The people who tried to get Daniel eaten were eaten. I want you to take into, a fact, into account that the Bible says evil companions corrupt good morals. Don't take that lightly. You might be able to think, well, I can, I can flirt with it, and I can flirt with disaster and push the envelope and push the envelope. I won't get touched. I'm young. I'm immortal. Very, very few times will you be able to control yourself in the popular crowd, in the crowd that everybody goes out and gets drunk on Saturday nights. Everybody goes out and, and does drugs on Friday nights. And on Sundays, they sleep it off so they can go back to school on Monday. That's not a good life. That's no kind of life. 
I want to remember my weekends. I want to remember every day of my life. If that's ever, if, if I'm able to do that, I want to remember every single day of my life. I don't want to have it taken from me. Take into account who your friends are right now. Don't, don't think this is something that you should start doing. Do it now. Start looking at your friends, who you hang out with now, and if need be, make some adjustments. I want to thank you for watching Lessons from a Park Bench.